Mike in Delano, Minnesota. Hey, Mike, what's up? Hey, thanks for taking my call, Tom. I've been on your show a bunch of times talking economics, and I've got a uh, question for you. I have a family member who's a uh, severely conservative economist, and she teaches micro and macro and international economics at a at a uh, college in, in uh, the Midwest. Anyway, she sent me a, a, a slide presentation from another conservative uh, economist, and the point is, is that progressivism uh, isn't efficient because it uh, doesn't allocate scarce resources uh, very well, and it uh, does not allocate to their most highly valued use. Right. And the gist of it is that socialism and progressivism uh, does not create wealth. Um, I thought you were the perfect person to call to get uh, your take on this. Well, this is and, this uh, is Milton Friedman 101, and, right? and, and there is some truth to it, actually. I mean, you know, Friedman's hypothesis was that here's here's your basic choice you can have central planning these are the these are the two extremes obviously you know the old soviet five year plan you can have central planning where where a bunch of people who might be the smartest people in the room sit around and say what should we do for the next year okay well let's fix the price of corn at this the price of wheat at that the price of oil at that and let's give these kind of incentives to 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 you know make solar and, and you know and you and you fix uh, tax policy and 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 incentive, you know, which is an incentive. You know, taxes are uh, arguably the main reason for taxes is not just to raise revenue; it's to alter behavior. So you fix these policies in a way that you think is going to be best for society. On the other hand, you've got the so-called free market. You've got the marketplace where you have hundreds of millions of decisions being made by by hundreds of millions of people, hundreds of billions of decisions being made every minute by hundreds of millions of people. And every one of those people is making a decision that they think is the best decision for them. Now, in many cases, those decisions are not the best decisions for them. In many cases, those decisions are skewed by things like advertising that, that gets people to buy things that are actually bad for them. But generally speaking, in a, in a world where all things are true, where there's absolute access to information, where, which is one of the big holes in Friedman's theory, and 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 everybody has the exact same information base, then the marketplace's decisions would certainly generally be optimal compared to the the eggheads base. Okay, to to use the the Friedman model. Now here's where that starts to fall apart. That all makes perfect sense if you're trying to figure out um, what's the best kind of computer to have out in the marketplace. Or what's the best kind of car? Uh, back when I lived in Germany, uh, we were just you know a few miles from the East German border, and the East Germans had one kind of car. It was called the Trebi, and uh, Trabant. They called it Trebis, and it was this little two-cycle engine that, that was just this god awful thing. It made all kinds of terrible noise and it smelled terribly. But it was the only kind of car you could buy because central planning, right? Um, so if you want to decide what's the best kind of car to have. It's a good idea to have a relatively free marketplace where people, with, with competition, and you use the government to enforce that competition by preventing any one company from getting too large, you know, the Sherman Act kind of thing. In other words, regulated capitalism, some controls on capitalism so that they're actually in, that, that serve to enhance competition, so that the marketplace actually is making rational decisions. That all, that all actually has, you know, there's a, there's a lot of rationality to that. Where that breaks down is in two areas. The first is when it has to do with the commons, when it has to do with those things where there are natural monopolies. There are natural monopolies. You can how many power supplies can you get into your home? Only one. You know, only one power cable. How many water lines are you going to have into your home? How many sewer lines are you going to have going out of your home? How many? You know, and these kind of things. So you have these natural monopolies. And, and, you know, water system for the uh, roads, things like this. These are the police departments, fire departments. These are not things that are best determined by competition or by the free market. They're best determined by the needs of society. And uh, society needs to have its own internal marketplace to determine how these things should be done. And the best one that's been developed so far is called representative democracy. In other words, we, we hire people to administer these things, and if they do a crappy job, we fire them by elections and we hire new people. So that's one place where it breaks down. And, and you know, is, is, where, the, where Milton Friedman's theory breaks down is in the commons. 
And the second place where it breaks down is in what's called externalities. As long as companies can figure out ways to get you and me to deal with the externalities, in other words, the costs associated with their product, and then the marketplace isn't a genuine marketplace. For example, the oil industry. You and I are paying for the, for the Navy to protect ExxonMobil's supply of oil into the United States. You and I are paying for the hospital admission visits for the people who get cancer from them, from in asthma, the kids with asthma. Those externalities are not being put into the equation, and so they're not part of the marketplace. And, and without a government, without governance, without we the people in some way applying those externalities and protecting the commons, then Friedman's theories become mush. What they become is chaos. They become uh, a you know, fang and claw world. Making sense, Mike? You're listening Hang to on. the Tom Hartman Program. Just to, just to finish up that, that little rant about how Milton Friedman's free market stuff falls apart. Arguably, the biggest hole in that theory about, you know, millions of people are going to make millions of decisions and those decisions are going to be more efficient and, and you know, all that kind of, is that it assumes perfect knowledge. And it actually made more sense back in the day of Adam Smith than it does today, and here's why. And by the way, this was not Adam Smith's theory as much as the Milton Friedman folks like to the, the you know, the Chicago school boys, as they refer to themselves. Milton Friedman taught economics at the, at the University of Chicago back in the 30s and 40s and 50s. And then in the 70s, went and, and 80s, tried to apply some of these theories to, for example, when Pinochet, did, the military dictator, took over Chile. Friedman came in as an as a <laughs> economic advisor, totally screwed that country. Um, I mean, they're still recovering from it. But in any case. The, 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 the theory is that there's perfect knowledge. When Louise and I lived in Montpelier, Vermont, a little town of like 8,000 people, 7,900 people, something like that, it would, it would double in size every day because it was the state capital. Government workers would come in from small towns around. But basically, fewer than 10,000 people, as I recall. And uh, one of the small, the smallest state capital in the United States, the only one that doesn't have a McDonald's. In fact, every year we would, or every other year, we would vote to tax ourselves to pay for the lawyer who is fighting the lawsuit to, against McDonald's to keep the McDonald's. But that's a whole other story. There was an, 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 a doctor in town, an eye doctor, who was not very good. And he actually injured a couple of people. And word spread, and pretty soon nobody would go to him. And so he left. Now, that's the market working the way that a libertarian would have the market work. The problem, you know, one problem with that, of course, is that people have to get wounded before you know, right? But that's the libertarian argument against regulation, is eventually people are going to find out who the bad guys are and who the good guys are. And it, because everybody has, you know, perfect knowledge of what, of what uh, yeah, the quality and, and, and lack of quality of product, products and services, goods and services, they will ultimately make rational decisions. And arguably, that's a case of where it happened. Although, as I say, you know, some people had to be wounded for that to happen. But here's where it breaks down. I don't know where that doctor went, but what if he went to Manhattan? There are millions of people in Manhattan. Or New York City in general. What is it, 11, 12, 13 million people? Some mind-boggling number of people? I mean, he could just kind of kill person after person after blind person after person after person. And, you know, they could go back to their little community, their neighborhood, their, their six square block area where, you know, they might know, you know, 100 people or 200 people and tell everybody they know about this guy. And it still wouldn't affect his business because there's always another sucker. And that's the biggest problem with Milton, theory, Milton Friedman's economic theory, with the libertarian economic theory, with the conservative economic theory, is they always, they have to. They always predicate this efficiency of the marketplace argument on the assumption of perfect knowledge, that everybody shares a knowledge base. And it is a fantasy. Ain't never been, will never be. The closest you can get to that is, like I said, small town America. But even there, 
you've got to deal, you know, you, you, there are people who aren't going to know. There are going to, you know, there are going to be some people who don't know how to understand the information. There are people who, you know, you say, you know, uh, there, there will be people who, uh, due to deficits in IQ or information or understanding or age, wh whatever it may be, they can't have perfect knowledge. And that's where this whole Friedman, per, you know, libertarian, right-wing economic theory falls apart. It just absolutely falls apart.